Hey everyone, we're Life with Beth and Court. We're full-time RVers and we travel, work, and live in our 26 foot travel trailer. And we're gonna be really honest, we kind of suck at checking the weather and we have the entire time we've been RVing and we haven't really taken it seriously. Now we don't know enough to teach you about how to take it seriously, but our friend Derek does. Derek is a meteorologist who works at the National Weather Service in Paducah, Kentucky. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah! <laughs> we thought the best and most fun way to kick this off would be with a little true or false and a little bit of asking open-ended question to test our knowledge base of where we're starting with weather before we get into some of our questions we have for Derek. True or false? Severe thunderstorms can produce just as much damage as a tornado. Don't look at mine. No cheating. One, two, three. That's right. Woo! Okay. True or false? It has to be rainy where you are to have a flash flood. I'm not very good about this one. Okay, three, one, two, two three. one. It's true. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, wait. Did I say it has to be raining? Yes. Oh, it's false. Yes. <laughs> true or false? If you're outside and you hear thunder and you're seeing lightning, a safe place to take shelter would be in a nearby gazebo. One, two, three. It's false. Oh. True or false? The National Weather Service is the official provider of seven day forecasts, watches, and warnings across the entire United States. Woo! That sounded like a power statement. It was. Hmm. Ready? It's true. Yay! Yay! He did right sound too. really confident. He got more power confident <laughs> as that went on. You look at the forecast and you see there's extreme heat coming in the next few days. What are some things you could do as RVers to make sure that you stay safe? Oh, I like true or false better. Don't look at mine. You can't do four. <laughs> Number one, get a pool. The day, the forecast tomorrow, there's going to be a kitty pool. Okay. Number two, drink water. Number three, get a neck fan. What, what's a neck fan? <laughs> it's those fans that hang around your neck and they blow right up in your face. Okay. okay. That's a pretty solid answer. All right. My answers are also drink water. Stay in air conditioning. Three, if you're outside, be in shaded areas. And then four, there's something about putting cold compresses on your armpits. That comes to mind. I think that may be a TikTok trend. <laughs> no, it's, it's like those mango true. fruit roll-up snacks. When you're in, in an area where severe weather can occur, name three ways that you can stay safe and informed by getting weather warnings delivered to you. Mm. Number one is a definite cheat because I learned about it from Derek while we were here. It's a weather radio. Number two, phone alerts from like weather apps. And number three, the weather channel. Disappointingly, we had the same answers for the most part. That's not disappointing, I've got that's good if it's right. Weather radio, number two, my phone. And number three is town sirens. But I know that not all towns have them. Okay. I was thinking of Wilson, Kansas, where we think they had town sirens, but they just played Foo Fighters instead. I'm impressed with that answer. Thank you. I wouldn't have thought of that. So I don't know what they sound like or so, wh what to do when they go off. Well, we'll find out when we talk to Derek. Derek's the guy. You're in your RV and you get an alert for a tornado warning. Where are three places you can take shelter to stay safe? So, Watch means all the taco ingredients are present. Warning means the tacos, tacos are here. made. The taco is here. Answers are a brick building, someone's basement. I don't know who you'd know in random towns, but basements are good. Mm -hmm. And number three, a big store, because they seem sturdy. Number one, a ditch. I also had a basement. A bathroom away from windows and then something about load-bearing walls. A church, because if there's a tornado in the middle of the night and you need somewhere to go, maybe churches are open. Get that off your face, you don't know. They will some, some churches are open all the time. When have you ever encountered a church that has doors open all the time? I think it's time to talk to Derek. It's time to talk to Derek. Okay, so Derek, you asked us a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. We wrote down answers and we don't know if they're right. Okay. So let's get into talking about them. <laughs> 
Okay. True or false, severe thunderstorms can produce just as much damage as a weak tornado. I said, I said true, true and Beth said true. Yes, you were both right. Uh, severe thunderstorms can produce winds in excess of 60, 70, 80, sometimes even stronger winds. And that's just as strong as a weak tornado. Just because the winds are blowing in one direction doesn't really reduce the amount of damage that they can cause. I just now realized, which is so silly, that a tornado is that powerful of a wind, but it's going in all directions. Yeah. Is it spinning or is it not? That's kind of the difference between the two. If we are in our RV and we get a severe thunderstorm warning, what are some steps we should take to make sure that we're safe? Well, the severe thunderstorm warnings can be issued for different hazards. Some of the hazards can be really large hail. So if that's the case, mm -hmm. you, know, you want to be you know inside your RV would be a safe place to be. If it's for high winds, you know, you're going to want to think about getting to a sturdier shelter, especially uh, in your you know, if you're camping or in your smaller RV where the 60 mile an hour winds could, you know, shift your RV or turn it over. That would not be a good time. Most people who are killed in, you know, tornadoes and, you know, really high end severe thunderstorms are not really killed so much by the wind itself. It's by flying debris, okay. things mm. falling on you, especially things hitting your head. I wouldn't have thought of that, which seems so silly once you hear it out loud because obviously. Next question. It has to be raining where you are to have a flash flood. And we yeah, said we false. said false. That's right. And of course, it could be raining heavily where you are. There could be a flash flood. The rain can fall upstream, and all that water has to cat, you know, go somewhere, so yep. it drains down the river. And so it can be dry where you are, but the river can still rise. Um, and that can be especially dangerous if you're uh, at uh, sleeping at night. The flash flood warnings that we issue from the Weather Service, you know, not just you know immediate. They're long duration, three to six hours long. That kind of accounts for that the water draining into the, especially the smaller streams. Once it gets there, they rise really quickly. That was one of the questions I had was, it's called flash, which sounds fast. Mm -hmm. But like how fast is fast when you say flash flood warning? Uh, usually just a few minutes. In places out west, especially where there isn't, you know, maybe you don't have a lot of soil. It's very, you know, there's lots of mountains. The mm -hmm. water just immediately runs down. So you have a lot of mm -hmm. what are called like dry creek beds and things like that where, you know, it's dry. It doesn't look like it could be dangerous, but, you know, maybe a few miles away, you have a thunderstorm that drops a lot of rain. All that water cascades into these dry streams, dry creek beds, and all of a sudden, you know, your campground, which is dry, all of a sudden has a river running through it. They're extra dangerous too, even if you're not in your camper, but if you're driving, it only takes about a foot of water to sweep a car uh, off no the road. No kidding. Only wow. for the water. You know, once your vehicle is swept off the roadway, then you're kind of at the mercy of the water. Totally. And it might not just be water. There could be you know, lots of debris and things like that. It makes you know, the currents are really tough to swim against too. So it's, it's a really, really dangerous situation. If a road is flooded and you can't see what the road looks like, it could have washed out underneath. And you could thought, oh, I'm driving through this road. Like all the, this, road the, road the road washed away? The road will wash away. There might be like a culvert underneath that could collapse. And all of a sudden there's a big gap in the road. Well, if your truck hits that, you know, all of a sudden, you know, there's no road for you to drive on and it gets picked up and swept down the road. New oh, fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it only takes six inches of water to sweep a person off their feet what? and a foot of water to sweep a car off the road. Six wow. inches. True or false, you're outside, you see lightning, you hear thunder. A safe place to take shelter would be in a gazebo. And you both put... I put true I question said, mark. I said false. Okay. It was false. The reason why the gazebo is not safe is that it's not enclosed. It doesn't just come down straight down on top of you. It can travel through. What? You know, on, yeah, it can travel, you know, sideways and things like that. Why'd you Wait. Put false if you didn't know this either? Well, I thought he was going to say that like lightning could strike it and catch it on fire or something uh, or like oh, yeah. carry <clears throat> the current of the electricity. I didn't know lightning could friggin' strike sideways. Yes. Any sort of place that's like open like that, you're, you're vulnerable. Take shelter in an, you know, a, an enclosed space place with four walls it's anchored to the ground. Not metal. <laughs> Not right? metal. Okay. okay. I knew that. Um, or, you know, a hard top vehicle. Um, that's a safe place. Your truck. your truck would yeah. be a good mm -hmm. place to take shelter. Or a place like a bathroom shelter. What um, about a porta potty? Then? I think I'd rather be struck than get tipped over in a porta potty. So the lightning is like it's static electricity on steroids. There's a charge difference between the cloud and the ground. And it wants to balance that charge difference. And it's trying to find the path of least resistance to get there. Oh, that That's lightning. It's just just so efficient. The National Weather Service provides the official seven-day forecasts and watches and warnings for the entire United States. 
I said true. I said true with a smiley face. Yes, you're both yeah. right. Not only for the lower 48, but Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa, 122 offices all around the country that cover wow. all the states and territories. If we're getting weather alerts through other apps on our phone, mm -hmm. are those from the National Weather Service that they're then just pushing out via their platform? Yes, they're uh -huh. relaying our alert. And just out of curiosity, what is the timeline of like when you issue and then when they release it on the apps? It should be instant. Okay. First open-ended question we had, three things you can do to stay safe when there's extreme heat in the forecast. Derek, tell me that getting a pool is one of the answers. I mean, pools are great. Everyone loves pools in the summertime, <laughs> but not everyone can get a pool. You in know, 24 hours. In 24 hours. <laughs> Cross it off, you lost that one. He said they're great though. The other things you had there about drinking water, probably the number one thing, staying hydrated is super important. Water is obviously most important. There are things that are gonna rehydrate, quartz drinks and things like that. Yeah, those yeah. things. Things to avoid, high calorie caffeine beverages, alcoholic beverages, because those can dehydrate you. Oh no, I really like caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> so drinking water, and then your third one. Is a neck fan a reasonable solution? Well, part, like I would say it's part of I like, get partial thing. credit. It's really important to stay, you know, especially if you're going to be outside a lot on a really hot day, is taking lots of breaks in a shady pool area, you know, where you can have a breeze <laughs> and things like that. Um, and that's that probably takes us to court's answers. Okay, so I also had staying hydrated, mm -hmm. so I get a check mark for that. And then if you are outside, staying in shaded areas yes. as much as possible. Yeah, take breaks. If you have to be out in the sun, take breaks every maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And then staying inside in air conditioning. Yes, condition. that's another great option if you have it. Anything that you can do to help extract the heat from your body. Like put cold compresses on your armpit? Well, <laughs> I don't think it has to be your armpits. If you are outside, you understand if you're getting heat stroke or heat exhaustion. I think that's what that is. Yeah, yeah. that's the first aid thing yeah. to keep in mind. But you know, signs of heat stroke and heat exhaustion, well, sometimes you get kind of dizzy mm -hmm. or sometimes people get even delirious. You're really thirsty. You're sweating a lot. You get nausea. That's when you immediately get to a cool area. That's where the cool compress comes in handy. Heat stroke is more serious. That's when you need to go to the emergency room. Confusion, being dizziness, and finally losing consciousness. Those are signs of heat stroke. And that's when you need to go to the ER immediately. So there's a lot of RVers who travel with kids and pets. Mm -hmm. And I know that adults are one thing, but obviously children are little tiny humans mm -hmm. and pets, I mean, they're covered in fur. So are there any special precautions that people should be thinking about for the younger crowd and That's a good question. Yeah. Pets? Children and the elderly are especially vulnerable mm -hmm. to extreme heat. So those folks are gonna experience those symptoms usually first. So you have to keep a really close eye on them. And then obviously with pets, they have fur. They can only regulate their own temperature so much. So they can be especially vulnerable as well. Things to keep in mind if you have dogs, you know, hot pavement. Yes. The pavement can be well over a hundred degrees and it, you know, it can burn your skin and it can burn their Paws. Yeah, so paws. make sure you have something you can put on, you know, put on their paws. Save walking them in the, or either in the early in the morning or late in the evening. And that goes for everyone else too. You know, yeah, if yeah. you can move your activities to early in the day or late in the day when it's cooler, you know, and stay cool during the middle of the day. So All right. what I'm hearing is I basically won that round. Listen, Maybe he not. didn't say that getting a pool was a bad idea. He just said most people can. The next question I asked you to name three ways to get informed of a tornado warning to stay safe. And we both said weather, weather radio. radio. We just happened to have one sitting over here. It wasn't really <laughs> planned or anything. We are at the National Weather Service. Here's an example of a weather radio. It has AC power you can plug in. It also has a battery back. You can program it so it only alerts for you know the county that you're in. It'll alert you for things like severe thunderstorm and tornado watches. That's when the ingredients are coming together to be favorable for severe weather and tornadoes. And also for severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings. That's when all the ingredients have come together and the you know severe weather is occurring or it's about to occur. The taco is yes. made. The taco, the taco is, is made. Yes. That's why it's so important to keep one of these uh, in your RV. You know, it's just something that comes with being being vigilant, I think, for especially if you're in an area that can get severe weather. This will wake you up all hours of the day. The big thing we talked about is we have alerts on our phone. We have mm -hmm. multiple weather apps because of our mm -hmm. But if you have your phone in silent mode, we learned, which we do when we sleep, then mm -hmm. you will not get those notifications. Yes. So that's why having a weather radio is really important. Important. You know, you want to definitely make sure that something will wake you up. Cell phones are also really important ways to get weather information, uh, not only from like apps and things like that, weather apps that will alert you, but also they have, you know, the alerts that go off in the middle of the night if there's a tornado wind. Those are called wireless emergency alerts. You just have to make sure they're enabled on your smartphone. Those are two ways a smartphone can really be helpful in keeping you aware of the severe weather. And do town sirens actually exist? So yes, those are kind of a gray area. 
area because okay. the sirens are not controlled by the weather service. Okay. So some towns don't have sirens at all. Right. Some counties will have sirens in certain areas, but not every area. So in some parts of the county, you might hear the siren. In other parts of the county, you might not. And so if you're traveling around full time in an RV, is that really something you really want to take a lot of time right, to figure right. out? Also, the big thing about sirens is they're not designed to be heard inside. That's good to know. So, so yeah, not that, reliable. They're reliable in very specific situations, but right. you shouldn't rely on them solely, uh, right. especially if you're going to be inside. TV, radios or another, they'll broadcast warnings when they're issued. So those are good sources to have to get information. Social media, a lot of TV stations, they might stream their coverage on social media. I think the challenge from an RV standpoint is just being familiar with the local media where you go from place right. to place. Last question, because I feel like this is a really important question. If you get a tornado warning and you're in your RV, where are three places you can go to take shelter to be safe? Okay, you start with yours. <laughs> Mine, I just generically said a brick building. Yeah, that's that's a good place to go. A sturdy shelter, obviously, is going to be Better. superior yeah. than an RV. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So if it doesn't have a basement, you know, interior room on the lowest floor. So a lot of good time to a good place to be a closet or a bathroom or something, okay. someplace like that on a building like that. You might check if your campground has a storm shelter. Yep. Might be a reinforced building or could be something underground. Your my third, my one. third one was a big store because they seem heavy duty. Right. It's one of those things. Looks can be deceiving sometimes. A lot of times those stores are built. They're, they're designed, you know, kind of like big warehouses where there's, you know, big open ceilings and big cement walls, but there's not a lot of support inside. So a lot of times what will happen is That's the walls true. will just tilt down and collapse. And so not only will the walls possibly fall on you, the ceiling would come down on you too if a strong right. tornado hit that. So would not recommend going there. The caveat would be unless you knew they had a storm shelter or right. a designated safe place where you could go, which being RVers and you're traveling, you might not know that ahead yeah. of time. Some stores will have their designated shelter like in a bathroom or someplace like that. They'll oh, hurt okay. everyone in there and in a place where you can be safe. And I just think of like, as you said, the big box stores and you're explaining it, I think of like, the rows and rows of inventory that mm -hmm. they have that are stacked like Jeez, a pizza, wood, like a Costco. Yeah, or, and mm -hmm. if that were to all tumble in, that actually seems really dangerous. Yes, that would yeah. be. We talked about flying debris being really dangerous. You know, there's that's a lot of debris yeah. that could get picked yeah. up. It's a really tough situation because, you know, obviously the RV isn't a place you don't want to be, but you might not have a whole lot of time to make a decision. So that's why I think it's kind of, maybe it's important, especially if you're going to be traveling from place to place, you know, to get familiar with that location, just kind of get that plan ready, you know, so you're not scrambling at the last minute to figure out, Okay, totally. where do we go? Absolutely. Have a plan. One place I would recommend not sheltering is your vehicle because those can get tossed. Oh. And not only can they get tossed, but debris can fly into the vehicle as well through the windshield. And yeah. so not Gosh. only could you get hit by debris, you could get hit by flying glass as well. Oh, and so, so uh, that actually leads into another point. A lot of RVers have travel days. So mm -hmm. we have travel days where we're moving from one spot to mm -hmm. the other. Sometimes they're four hours long, five hours mm -hmm. long. So if we're traveling, we're on the highway and mm -hmm. we get this mm -hmm. notification, that would be my question. Like, do we drive and try to get to a store that maybe we could shelter in? Or would mm -hmm. it be safest to just get out of the vehicle, lay in the ditch, and cover our heads? If you can't find a safe place to take shelter, so maybe, like, you know, a gas station. Sometimes they have coolers and, you know, in reinforced rooms. Oh, yeah. Someplace oh. like that. Um, if you can't get to a shelter, though, your last resort would be to get out of your vehicle and get in that low spot like a ditch or a ravine. One place not to go is an overpass. Yes, we yes. learned this from TikTok and yes. then we asked you and it was true. Yes, in, in theory you think, oh, this seems like a great place, this reinforced bridge, but yeah. what happens is when a tornado passes through, that overpass acts like a wind funnel. It channels the wind, so you get really, really high wind speeds. Yeah. The tornado is carrying debris, so you're exposed to an area with really high winds and debris. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of a sitting duck, so to speak. Yeah. And people have gotten killed trying to shelter uh, in it's tornadoes so in these in these areas. So that is not a good place to go. If you're looking at it and it's not really moving left or right, it's just kind of staying there, that means it's moving directly towards you. So you need to get out of the way or get into your shelter. If it's moving from one side or the other, that means it's kind of moving you know, away from you, but it still might pass really close. And the other thing to keep in mind is sometimes it's not just one tornado. Sometimes it could be a family of tornadoes all moving together. Oh, tornado families? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I want that to feel endearing because it's a little family, but that sounds yeah. terrible. They're called, we call them multi-vortex tornadoes. And so Jeez. sometimes what, what can be really dangerous is that you think you're seeing the tornado, 
Meanwhile, another tornado vortex Somewhere. develops just you know, a distraction, the side, and it comes up and might sneak up and you know come from a different direction that you're not expecting it. So that's why it's important to get to your shelter, even if you think the tornado is passing safely. Right. Something else could come out of the blue and get Ooh. you. You have to have an extra level of vigilance uh, to be safe to, and following the lifestyle of, of, of camping and, and RVing full time. And that's two sides of the same coin, right? We all get into RVs because you can move so so mm -hmm. easily, but at the same time, that means you can move so easily. <laughs> If people have other questions about how to be more vigilant and get answers to other weather concerns, where's a good place that they can go as a reliable resource? Well, you can always reach out to the weather service. You know, our website is weather.gov, you know, and then there usually will be a big map. You can click on the area you're staying at and they'll take you to the local office that serves your area. You know, if you have extra questions, you know, feel free to reach out and contact the, that office, you know, if you have specific questions about okay. your area. There are other things you can do well beforehand if you want to become more knowledgeable about the weather in general. A lot of weather service offices offer storm spotter classes if you want to become a weather spotter. Oh. You know, those are designed to report weather information to us, but they're also designed to inform you about how severe weather can be dangerous to you and how best to be safe. Great. All right, well, hopefully this video scared you sufficiently into taking <laughs> weather serious. I mean, don't live in fear, but be vigilant, be prepared, yeah. and be safe. Go team! That's so good! <laughs>